in Albuquerque, you never know what's going to happen on Big Monday. Our late edition tonight, UNLV in New Mexico. Lobos coming off their first conference win Saturday over San Diego State. Shockingly, Vegas is 0-3 so far. We're going to focus in on some outstanding guards tonight. Marcus Banks for the Rebels, Ruben Douglas for the Lobos. Marcus Banks has great speed with a basketball, Bob. You talk about Reuben Douglas, look at those numbers, but right now in conference play, this guy is putting 30 points a game on the board in three conference plays. He's tearing them up. That's Jimmy Dykes. I'm Bob Carpenter. Rebels in their road red, hurting for certain at 0-3, and Reuben Douglas is lighting things up. He's averaging 25 a game. It's 30 a game in conference play. Stanley Reynolds throws the ball straight up, and it's out of bounds in the near side. They may do it again, or they may give it to the home team. Starting lineups tonight, Ruben Douglas alongside Javen Tyndall, who had a coming out party with 17 against San Diego State the other day. And here are the Lobos in control. They scored seven points in the last nine minutes of that game Saturday and still beat San Diego State 66-62. Charlie Spoon, our second year at Vegas, they're struggling. A team that was picked second in this league. Ruben Douglas gets it going with the three. How else could we start our late game on Dick Monday? He's a guy that you better short leash for 40 minutes. At the other end, a three goes down for Demetrius Hunter, who wasn't playing a week ago. He's made a very quick comeback from that Achilles problem. He gives them an additional shooter on the perimeter, Demetrius Hunter, to go with Marcus Banks. Been really slowed by tendonitis in that Achilles tendon. And he's only about 60%. Somehow he played 26 minutes at Air Force on Saturday. Reuben Douglas to turn around. Couple of Rebels there to rebound it. And here comes Marcus Banks. Marcus is averaging 22 a game in conference play. Rebels throw the ball away. Jermaine Lewis looking for a cut. There's Richie McKay. Two years Colorado State, two years Oregon State, and now at his father's alma mater. Richie's dad, Joe, was a three-year starter for the Lobos back in the early 60s. And in the memory of his late father, trying to do a good job here in Albuquerque to rebuild this program. Bob, both clubs mirror each other offensively. They run a motion offense for New Mexico. The ball will go through the hands of Ruben Douglas nine out of every ten trips. Ryan Ashcraft will throw the ball in. Quick catch and shoot. The three ball rims out for Javen Tyndall. Dump down, J.K. Edwards. Looks like he was fouled before the shot attempt by David Coyote. That'll be number one of the 6'9 freshmen. You no, know, Edwards was recruited to fill up uh, the inside scoring presence that they lacked last year. Last year, Marcus Banks was actually the best low post player that UNLV had on the floor. Vegas getting the ball in close to the basket. Lewis couldn't get a shot. And now Demetrius Hunter launches one out of bounds. Two quick turnovers by the running Rebels. Demetrius, of course, played at Georgetown, sat out a year, and he's back here averaging 10 points a game. A Vegas foul at midcourt, way from the basket, on Marcus Banks. Oh, I'll tell you what New Mexico's doing since the last time we saw him at Fort Collins a couple weeks ago. They're playing much harder, and they're playing very unselfish on the offensive end. Reuben Douglas is getting more accustomed to giving the ball up and then getting it back. Early in the year, he didn't want to give it up at all. Your category leaders there for the Lobos wouldn't go for the right side. Or Jamal Williams. Elron Johnson. Coaches call him the most versatile player in the Mountain West. Look at him get the rebound to the rack. Can't score. Reuben Douglas the rebound. Ruben for three. He is shooting 48% beyond the arc in Mountain West play. Demetrius Hunter goes coast to coast. Ruben has six. Demetrius has five. Vegas will run it right up your backside if you don't retreat to the defensive end with quickness. Now with Ruben Douglas, Bob, you just don't dare him to shoot. He's taking 22, 23 shots a game. He was trying to pass it off for Ashcraft and a foul. It'll be on Demetrius Hunter of oh, Vegas. Bob, there you see that shot by Reuben Douglas. Now he's going to jump up and stroke it from 23, 24 feet away. 
mean, you don't you don't dare him to shoot it. You guard him with a short leash. You check his breath for 40 minutes and hope you hold him under 20. Well, he's about to tie Charles Smith's record. Charles Smith, the all-time leading scorer at New Mexico, with 1,993 points. This one's going back the other way. That's number one on Ruben Douglas, evidently. UNLV comes in this ball game allowing 42% shooting from the three-point line in conference play, and New Mexico makes eight. Now we've got a technical off the ball. Something involving Demetrius Hunter of UNLV and Ruben Douglas was kind of jawing away at each other there. So Hunter gets his second foul very early. And this is another area where Reuben Douglas is just putting a large knot on people's head. He's getting the free throw stripe 10 times a ball game. He's not shooting a great percentage from the field, but he's a scorer. He can shoot it from three, and he's uh, awfully good at that charity stripe. Reuben Douglas with seven points on the night. So it's the Lobos early seven to five. Demetrius has to sit down with two fouls in the first two minutes and 39 seconds. Now, of course, you don't get possession anymore after T. So it's UNLV with the ball at the other end. As we check out the Rebel category leaders, we must add Dalron Johnson, also one of their leading scorers at 17 a game in conference play. You know, I think UNLV is better when Marcus Banks is getting about 18 points a game and six or seven assists. Now, he'll have a lot of games where he gets 26 points and one assist. That's not when this Vegas club is at their best, though. But he made some great plays down the stretch against Utah last week. Didn't get the ball in his hands, though, for the last shot. Left corner. It wouldn't go for Ernest Turner, who just checked in. Here's Tyndall of New Mexico, a no-looker. Dalron Johnson got in the passing lane to deflect that thing away. Tyndall went off the other day, six of seven, five of six from three-point land as he knocked down 17 against the Aztecs of San Diego State. New Mexico runs a lot of motion offense. It's a lot of screening. Guys are searching out Ruben Douglas, trying to nail his defender and free him up for shots for the most part. Williams, sweet on the turnaround for Jamal Williams, a 6'6 sophomore out of Corona, California. And the Lobos lead by four. When Williams puts the ball on the floor, he is not going to pass it. You defend that drive and don't let him finish at the rim on you. Great look underneath. Marcus Banks from Dalron Johnson. Terrific job, and that's the versatility of Dalron Johnson as a, as a passer. He's kind of a floater in a half-court offense. He doesn't have a true position. Beach in a lot of ways. He's also their all-time leading shot blocker at UNLV. Jamal Williams again. He's got that little jump hook move going. Somebody better overplay him to that right hand. You've got to get on his right hand, and if he continues to drive that rim, help defenders have to run at him. Again, he's not going to give it up. Dalron Johnson, another nifty pass. Jermaine Lewis can't make the shot. And Tyndall will bring the Lobos back the other way. Over the top, Williams. Douglas, yes! Still one of the tougher places to play in the country, the pit. You're getting a feel for it right now. I feel it. Great deflection, Jamal Williams. Lobos have it back. Douglas, deep three. Back iron, he's going to get his own rebound. And then he was fouled by Marcus Banks. And that will be number two on him. Early foul trouble for the Rebels. The pit is rocking. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is presented by Bud Light. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. And Dollar Rent-A-Car. When it's your money, log on to dollar.com for our lowest rates.
The best thing you can do if you're the home team in this building, make some early shots, get some defense going. The crowd takes care of the rest, partner. It also helps when your transition game gets going early. That's exactly what New Mexico did just a couple of possessions ago. They're really unselfish with the basketball right now. Hold it right here, guys. This is what makes the play. Ruben Douglas is such an outstanding perimeter shooter. He's going to drive the defender out towards him away from the basket. Now watch what happens. See how the defender has to creep out towards Douglas? That allows the pass to be made to one side of the floor, then back to Ruben Douglas. He commands so much respect and attention from the defense, Bob. Little things don't always show up, but that's what actually triggered the break for him that time. New Mexico, five out of ten at the first media timeout. UNLV, three out of seven from the floor. And Coyote's drive stopped by Dalron Johnson. Ruben Douglas couldn't scoop it up and in. Now the Rebels are run. Marcus Banks playing with two early fouls. Here's Dalron. Jermaine Lewis for three. Short. He, of course, only three of 11 from that range in conference play. And it was his three that missed late in the game last Monday that helped Utah win that ball game. How about those Utes going to BYU on Saturday? And with Rick Majerus not on the bench, able to beat the Cougars and end that 44-game home winning streak. I tell you what, what an outstanding job by Kerry Ruff to, to handle that club the 24 hours before the game, during the game. They got outstanding leadership from Britton Johnson and Caton. Ruben Douglas as the shot clock was about to expire. And Marcus Banks back the other way for the running Rebels. Down he goes. J.K. Edwards, sweet on the turnaround. That's a 6'8 junior who was playing Juco ball last year at Indian Hills in Iowa. I know Vegas would like to get J.K. Edwards more touches in the half court. You want to see if is he good enough to make you defend him more than one on one. That's what Vegas would like to get out of. What a cut. Keone with a great pass for Ruben Douglas. And Ruben's into double figures already with 11. He is averaging 30 a game in conference play. Bob, I'm really impressed with how Douglas has uh, adapted to the motion offense. I mean, he's been pretty much a set play offensive guy his entire career. So he's learned a new offense his senior year, and he's really learning to read the defense well. He was 4 out of 17 on Saturday, but still managed 21 points. The versatility of Dalrun. Johnson knocking down the three, and he's a 45-plus percent three-point shooter. You know, when he plays the four or five spot, he will draw the defender out away from the basket and either shoot over the top of you or go off the bounce. Again, he's kind of a floater in the half court when you watch him. He doesn't have a true position that he locks in on. Ryan Ashcraft running the point for New Mexico. This is Keone, one way, then the other. Good looking move. That's a freshman out of St. Francis High School in San Jose. Send Q Carey played there. Patrick Dennehy played there. He's redshirting at Baylor right now. Turner with a long miss. And the Lobos rebound with Jamal Williams. Who are they looking for? Ruben. 14 for Douglas. Vegas timeout. You better find him on the break. And you better find Super Tuesday, presented by Dollar rent -a tomorrow night. Indiana and Michigan State, and the Spartans have beaten the Hoosiers nine straight times on their home court. Then at 9 Eastern, Florida and LSU, and the Bayou Bengals are 11 and 1 at home this year. Talk that Indiana staff today, they're hoping to get Bracey right back. He's been uh, jogging and shooting, riding a bike a little bit, trying to get that backpack ready for him. and. Uh, LSU struggling a little bit at home. Look at this last basket by Reuben Douglas, Bob. Again, how does he get that wide open? In transition, if you're assigned to Reuben Douglas, as soon as you lose possession of the ball, you've got to go grab him on the jersey and just run with him in the open floor. That's what I call short leashing somebody. You guard him like you have a dog on a short leash for a walk. You never get more than three or four feet away from him. The guy is averaging 30 points a game in conference play. That's all you need to know. He's already had more field goals today than all day Saturday. Five already. That's an offensive foul on Jermaine Lewis. And he appears astounded by that call. 
We arrive at the second media timeout. Lobo's got it going. 14 for Ruben. They lead 2012. Ruben Douglas has hit three out of four three-pointers. Lobo's by eight as they make eight of the first 15. Well, look how open he is, Bob. I mean, that's a wide-open three-point look. Then he kind of runs off a little high-post rub play for him. And then in transition, he spots up and relieves the rotation and the result. You've got to team guard Ruben Douglas. You can't expect one guy to always be on him, especially in transition. Ruben Douglas is a guy that everybody on the team has to know where he is and run out at him, even if he's not your guy. Ruben averaged eight a game for Lute Olsen as a freshman at Arizona four years ago. He has rewritten some scoring things here in New Mexico ever since. Mark Walters checking in for the Lobos and an immediate turnover as the redshirt freshman was running the point out there. There is no question, no question who the number one team in the country is right now with what Arizona did to Kansas over the weekend. How about that? Yeah, and you know what? I, 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 was, I was as impressed with the play of Texas tonight as I was with Kansas actually winning the game because you knew Kansas was going to give their best effort. And Texas was right there with them step for step. That's an awfully good club for the Longhorns. I thought Kansas losing Saturday was the worst thing that could happen Certainly. to the Longhorns. Jermaine Lewis with his second foul as Ruben Douglas went skirting by him. Well, tomorrow on ESPN2, NBA Fast Break Tuesday, they'll announce the All-Star Reserves tomorrow. Somebody will get snubbed. Live post-game interviews from Celtics Pistons and live look-in at the Jazz Kings and five other games tomorrow night. It's really fun on Tuesday night to bounce around the league and watch. You talk about the Pistons and the Celtics. Richard Hamilton, one of the better guys in the league working off the screen, and Paul Pierce, one of the better guys in the league, just give me the ball and let him go get his own. How about Javen Tindall, a night at the improv on that play. His first basket coming off the best game of his career Saturday. John Naki, little guy number 44, running the point for UNLV. And that is a blocking foul on Mark Walters. What was interesting about that, nine other players were about to walk to the other end. They thought this was a charge. Walters he only, was well, he's only 6'2", but he always draws uh, the best perimeter player, sometimes the most versatile guy, and that time his feet were still moving to the side as a proper call. We'll give him style points for that 10-foot slide backwards to the baseline. John Naki will throw it in for UNLV. He's getting a little more playing time lately because of the injury to Demetrius Hunter, who's not in the game right now and on the bench with two fouls. This is a totally different team than we saw at Fort Collins a couple weeks ago talking about New Mexico. Their confidence level is at a season high. They're really sharing the ball well. Ruben Douglas, although he'll still at times force things, Ruben has to keep lead it on because ball. he's got some blood. So the New Mexico trainer, David Smith, will take care of him and get him back out there ASAP. Pretty active zone defense by New Mexico right now in the half court. That was a high-risk pass to the cutting Lamar Bigby. And the Lobo score without Ruben. Oh, Delron Johnson, another block. And there's that little jump shot again by Jamal Williams. He's got that one-hander going tonight, three out of three. You know, Rich McKay made a point with Jamal Williams a couple of weeks ago. He said, son, you're not playing hard for 40 minutes. From that point on, he's brought the effort. He gets a charge that time on an outstanding heads-up play by Lamar Bigby. Again, Bob, you see when Jamal Williams gets that ball in his hands and he does anything with it towards the rim, he's not even thinking that it passes an option right now. So you run at him defensively, you run a second defender at him, you can drop a charge or even maybe even get a turnover off of him. Running down to the 10-minute mark, first half, it's been very intense. Home team on top by nine. I can't believe UNLV is 0-3 in the league, and neither can Charlie Spoonauer. And you got a tough road game here tonight. Peters down low, Dalron Johnson. Great room service from James Peters. Johnson recognized he's got a smaller defender on him, so instead of playing on the perimeter of that possession, he runs to the low post and execute the high-low play for him. Here's Tindall hanging, banking, can't knock it down. And the UNLV rebound for James Peters, 6'8 junior, who was at Butler County in Kansas last year playing Juco ball. That is obviously Dalron Johnson over the top. 
Well, two possessions ago, you're going to take a look at Naki out here getting all kinds of pressure on him. Then there it is. That's the high low pass. You see Johnson was being guarded by a 6-2 defender, Walters. So good recognition. They isolate him on the low block, and he gets two points out of it. Charlie Spoonauer will get his number one perimeter guy, Marcus Banks, back in there. An early basket, but two fouls. He's only taken one shot. Talked to Jamal Williams today at the shoot around and I asked him what's the biggest difference offensively the last couple of weeks. He said for himself, Bobby's learning to, to screen Ruben Douglas and then knows what to do after he screens. And that's so important. If Douglas goes high off the screen, he'll back cut. If he doesn't, then he'll step to the perimeter. That's Big B up over everybody. So Lamar's made a couple of nice plays since checking in. Getting about nine minutes a game, a senior out of Detroit. And the Rebels on their way back. They have it back to within five with nine minutes to go first half. That's a palming call on Jamal Williams right in front of the official there, Larry Spaulding. Vegas has really good team speed and good overall team quickness. And this is an example of it. boom, just flying in from the perimeters, Big B. And they're very good when that ball's above the rim. They're not great technique boxing off type stuff, but they're active when the orange thing's above the orange thing. to make a play the pull up Amari Pearson had a touch loose ball Peters it never got inside Ryan Ashcraft a guy who had scored a total of seven points in two years an ex walk on running the point for New Mexico right now they have eight scholarship players including him a UNLV hand check foul away from the basket on James Peters. Super Tuesday, number 20 Indiana against a struggling Michigan State team. And Jimmy, you and I both feel those Spartans are still a club we're going to hear something from in February and maybe March. You know, they're 10 and 8, 2 and 4 in the Big Ten. I still feel like they can play with anyone that we've seen all season long. I know Tom is probably a little frustrated right now. Look at that Florida squad. They're 16 and 2 off the best start in school history. They've won 12 in a row. I love the play of Matt Barnum. Watch him tomorrow night. 6'10, 237, a senior, 15 points, six boards. He's the reason why they're winning. Hey, I've got a new Michigan coaching combination for you. Izzo and East Lansing, Mariucci in Detroit. They're best friends. Yeah. Go on up there, Steve. If I'm the Lions, I'm on his doorstep right now. They were probably there yesterday. Running down to the eight-minute mark, Lobos by seven. And the crowd after the initial frenzy, enjoying their team leading right now. Omari Pearson traveled all over the place. Well, every week I show up and I say, when are we going to get Jimmy D's best of the West? All season long, it hasn't been coming. Tonight, finally, it's next, folks. Don't go away. Was up 26 19. I'm talking about the best guards in the West tonight. Certainly, Jason Gardner, the point guard on the number one team in the country, has to be there. Luke Ridenauer from Oregon, averaging about 19 and six a ball game, six assists. Jermaine Boyette from Weber State, a quality young man, has averaged about 20 points a game throughout his career up there. Reuben Douglas, the fourth leading scorer in the nation. Marcus Banks, as good as speed with a ball as you'll find anywhere in the country. Carl English out in Hawaii right now, averaging 19 and six. And Blake Stepp, who leads Gonzaga, and they're number one in the West Coast Conference right now, at five and zero. Oh, and that, uh, you know, Blake Stepp's had big shoes to fill, and he's done it well this year with Dick out being gone. Ashcraft unable to finish. It's good to see Blake Stepp back healthy after all the problems you and I saw him having early season last year. All uh, seven of those guys, Bob, are having great years. There's some other names you could float in there. Dante Richardson at Wyoming's awfully good. Salim Stoudemire after this weekend. But those seven now, they've done it consistently. That's Jimmy Dykes. I'm Bob Carpenter. The pit in Albuquerque. And they're going to jump up again as Ruben Douglas knocks one down. He has 17 in 13 minutes of this game. Delmon Johnson short of the other end. Here comes Tingle for New Mexico. The Lobos lead by 10. With Douglas in the rhythm that he is right now shooting that ball, Bob, the only way to stop him is for keeping from catching it. So he goes back cut and misses the jam. Maybe anticipating a little body on body from J.K. Edwards. 
There's Delron Johnson immediately surrounded by three Lobos. Somebody's open. It's Marcus Banks, and he is still scoreless. Earlier, I thought he had a basket, but they credited that thing to Jermaine Lewis. So Banks is scoreless, and that's way short from Delron. J.K. Edwards right back to him. And he traveled as he had a hard time controlling the pass cleanly. Well, if you're talking about Garden, uh, Ruben Douglas on a short leash, hold it, guys. This is not a short leash. You're talking about 10, 12 feet between the defender and Ruben Douglas right here. That can't happen. You've got to be holding his jersey right now. You hold his jersey, and you certainly don't help off of him. No one else is going to beat you for the 40-minute period other than Reuben Douglas. Don't help him, touch him, defend him, caboose him, whatever you want to call it. Don't leave number five. Hunter Banks and Lewis, three fouls for Vegas. And Reuben Douglas, six of 11. He's four out of five from three-point range. Coyote down to the baseline for Tyndall. His quick turnaround is short. And the UNLV rebound for Demetrius Hunter. Playing at about 60% with that Achilles. Good elevation on the shot. That's his second three of the night, and Demetrius has eight points. Well, he's a 41% three-point shooter. He really gives him an added dimension to go with the scoring ability of Johnson and Banks. Lewis way out there on Ruben Douglas now. Ashcraft waves him to the wing. Walters penetrating and the pull up. Nice mid range game. Evidently, that ball went in before it was touched or not touched by Coyote. The UNLV bench was asking for goaltending there. Coyote's minutes have gone from 14 a game to 25 a game just in the last couple, three weeks. Remain Lewis, no. J.K. Edwards. Let's have a look at what happened on the iron there. Bob, if any part of that ball is above the cylinder when it's touched, then it's offensive basket interference, and it certainly was. I that thing was not completely off that rim. Yeah, he definitely touched it. So New Mexico got a break. We got a timeout with 5.28 to go. And another reminder about NBA fast break tomorrow. We'll have a live post-game interview from the Celtics Pistons game. Live look in at the Jazz Kings, plus five other games with Kevin Frazier, Sean Elliott, and Tim Legler. We're good to see Vince Carter back home huh, after that injured right knee. Had 22 yesterday, and there's a look at the top 10. Now it's the time of the year that I start talking about common sense index. Explain to me how Louisville at 14 and 1 can be ranked below Kentucky when I was at the game and Louisville beat Kentucky by almost 20 points. That doesn't make sense. We're dead on on our coaches poll, but that, those need to be flip flopped right there. Kentucky's playing awfully well, but they should not be ranked ahead of Louisville, and that's a huge thing in the Bluegrass State. They argue about that kind of stuff 24 hours a day there. Yeah, you beat us, but we're still rated higher. Yeah, common sense index. You got to start thinking about it right now. Ruben Douglas creates his own separation and coming out of the Vegas timeout New Mexico draws blood and that's 19 for Ruben he's taken 12 shots already and made seven of them biggest lead for the Lobos 11 with 455 to go first half Delron Johnson that was a reach in on Jamal Williams who tries to play official and make the traveling call only three guys on the floor have the whistle. Now Ron Johnson loves to uh, fake left at times and go hard to his right. Now, I've been impressed with Jamal Williams so far in this ball game, stepping up with the effort and taking on Dalron Johnson. He's going to get some fouls. We don't want to voice your pleasure or displeasure to the officials. And Rich McKay's going to take him out and sit him down for a little bit. that could undo the Lobos is foul trouble. They are far from the deepest team in this league. Only five team fouls against New Mexico, so UNLV is not shooting yet. Well, they've got help coming next year when uh, Danny Granger gets eligible, the kid from Bradley that transferred. He was averaging 19 and about eight or nine boards. One of the better players in the Missouri Valley Conference will be a Lobo this time next year. He, he could be big time in this league. Yeah, he's a difference maker. We're told there were some folks in Illinois unhappy about that, his leaving. We were told that he pursued New Mexico. It was all the players doing. And he's here enrolled and practicing. 
Demetrius Hunter for three. How about Demetrius? Three for three beyond the arc tonight. 11 for him. I'm telling you, this guy's playing with a bad Achilles. He's just over 50% healthy. Yeah, he didn't go through warm-ups. That's how much they try to save him for the game. I think he has a lot of trouble playing defense. Air Force drove him crazy the other day, chasing people with that Princeton-type offense. They shot 15 layups in that game against Vegas on Saturday. It will happen a lot at Air Force this year, though. They are nuts to try to guard for 40 minutes. Three weeks from tonight, Jimmy and I will be at the academy. We can't wait. I don't know if Steve McClain feels the same. <laughs> I talked to him today. He can wait on it. He knows what kind of a headache he's in for. <laughs> oh, what effort, huh, by Lewis? Just I wanted it more than anybody else on the floor type rebound. Jermaine with his second basket of the night. 3.30 to go. Lobos lead down to four. Vegas has knocked seven off that deficit in a hurry. A lot of it thanks to Demetrius Hunter. Well, Douglas has to get some touches now in the offense. Tyndall for three. Rebound, Delron Johnson. And the Rebels, who are 0-3 in conference for the first time since 1970, when they were in the West Coast Conference, trying to get back close in this one now. Delron Johnson turning, Walters right there, unable to muscle to the basket. Lewis rejected by Coyote. Here comes Ruben Douglas. How did he get that pass through there? And Coyote blew the layup. Ruben for three. Did Vegas just step on the baseline trying to throw the ball in? Folks, back in the East, call your friends. Tell them to wake up. There's a guy on fire in the mountain time zone. Albuquerque, where Reuben Douglas is absolutely unconscious right now. Bob, watching this package, watch Reuben Douglas' feet every time he shoots. Just watch his feet. See how high they elevate on every shot. About eight to ten inches is all he jumps, but he does it the same way every single time. Even off the bounce, he jumps and elevates the same height every time. That is so important for a shooter to have great balance, elevate the same height every time, and have that true release and rotation on the ball. He's 6'5 and can flat out score. Reuben Douglas, four out of six from three-point range. His career high, nine against Pacific two years ago. There's a big-time move for Mark Walters of New Mexico. And some, anytime anybody but Reuben scores, that is so huge for Richie McKay. Vegas just not covering at all. They're, they're allowing opponents to shoot 54% from the field against them in conference play. You won't win ball games if you continue that. They're working hard on the offensive glass. Good work by Jermaine Lewis, and Mark Walters gets his second foul. So right now, New Mexico has a perimeter guy with two fouls and an inside guy, Jamal Williams, with a couple. Talked earlier about how impressed I was with with uh, Kansas and, and Texas tonight, how impressed I was with Texas. I think what you have to start looking at, Bob, is, is who can win on neutral floors. I mean, all we've decided so far in college basketball, I think, is who is very good at home, you know, and, and there's tough places to play. Arizona went in there Saturday and got it done in, in a place that's as hard as any place in the country. But it's all about neutral floors starting that second, third week of March. This is a building that has hosted numerous NCAA regionals. The memorable championship game when Jim Valvano's Wolfpack won the national championship and he ran all over this court looking for somebody to hug a minute 50 to go first half lobos by eight it's been the reuben douglas show a little bit short that time who wants this loose ball delron johnson of unlv hunter demetrius finally missing a three Big story for Vegas right now. Marcus Banks, a scoreless 0 for 4 first half. 
Ruben catches that ball anywhere he wants it. I mean, just any time he wants to go get the ball, he goes and gets it. New Mexico, a use it or lose it timeout with a minute 17 to go. Carl Ravitch is anchoring our Mass Mutual halftime report tonight. He'll talk about the Longhorns and the Jayhawks. And how about the night Nick Collison had there? UConn and St. John's earlier at the Garden. And the latest on the LeBron James Hummer situation. It's all coming up at halftime. We talked about Arizona over the weekend. And I, you know what? I've been impressed with Lou Olson's ability to make adjustments at the halftime of ball games this year. Obviously made a huge adjustment at Kansas. He also did it earlier in the year against Southern Cal when they're having trouble holding down the farmer kid. But it, I mean, it's a it, he's a guy that as the game goes on, he watches it, he evaluates, he makes changes. And they are getting it done. 15 of 32 for New Mexico tonight, 47 percent. Into the backcourt go the Lobos for Ryan Ashcraft. And this kid who hasn't played a whole lot, he's an ex-walk-on, has done a pretty solid job of running the point tonight. Coyote's little jumper won't go. Here's the outlet for Jermaine Lewis after the J.K. Edwards rebound. John Naki getting some playing time here. Delron Johnson kicks for Demetrius Hunter. Rolls in for D, and he's got 13. Boy, oh, I'd love to see him on two good wheels. That left Achilles heavily taped. 40 seconds to go. Lobos by six. Douglas. Oh, that's unreal. That's a three with somebody in his face. He's got 25. He's just playing with him. I mean, he absolutely is doing anything he wants right now to the team in red. Knocking off the hands of J.K. Edwards. Point nine seconds. New Mexico will check in Jeff Hart, who's a three-point shooter, just in case. They've got time for a catch and shoot here. They gotta throw it long. No shot there as Delron Johnson broke it up. And after 20 minutes of play, it's Ruben, Ruben, Ruben. Six of seven from three-point range. He's got 25. Spoonhour's defense can't stop him. Carl Ravitch, no telling how many he'll get tonight. But everybody knows Sports Center comes up after our late game on ESPN. We do want to give you a hint that it's over on ESPN2 at this very moment. At the half, it's Ruben Douglas and his show, 41 32 Lobos. He has been unbelievable tonight. Let me ask you something, partner. I've been trying to teach you the game the last seven or eight years. All right. Ruben Douglas has four assists and 140 minutes in conference play. <laughs> what does that tell you about Ruben Douglas? It tells you if you pass it to him, you're not getting it back. You're right. And that's okay. <laughs> He's a shooter. That's what it tells you. <laughs> you're a quick learner. Look at this right now. You look at our star watch from early, and uh, certainly Ruben Douglas is up holding his end of the deal. 25 points in 19 minutes is what he played in the first half. Marcus Banks is a no-show so, so far. Ruben, 9 out of 16 from the field, 6 out of 7 from the three-point line. Someone better guard him. Demetrius Hunter for UNLV. He had a very nice first half with 13 points on 5 of 6 shooting. Shot clock is winding down one of the few times tonight. Left corner, Dalron Johnson, that's a three. And for Dalron, that gets him up to eight points on the night. They're gonna need a lot more from him. And Jimmy, they're gonna need some upperclassmen leadership at the defensive end of the floor. I mean, I mean they, they, they need stops. They need guys to not be thinking offense for 40 minutes and thinking defense right now. Demetrius Hunter batting that ball away from Jamal Williams gets his third foul of the night. Hardly seems possible. New Mexico missed more than half their shots. Look at UNLV just staying in the game because they've got a plus nine rebound advantage. That's about the only thing that Charlie Spooner, I'm sure, is uh, pleased with right now. But UNLV, I'd call this a shooting foul, by the way. 
and Jamal to the line gets his ninth point of the night. UNLV came into this game in conference play giving up 50% field goal shooting, 42% from three point range. Look at the fight and David Coyote to get that ball back. Boy, that'll frustrate you if you're Charlie Spooner on that bench right now. You just have another example of them wanting a little bit more than you, huh? Shot clock's on 20, and then 4, and then 20, and then 16, and then 51. But at the shooting end, it's just fine. It's at 15, 14 right now. That's the clock at the north end of the floor that's going bananas on us right now. They're going to have to pull the teams off the floor and get that thing. I mean, it looks like somebody's... I got a short in that. Now the one at the right end of the floor is just fine, sitting on 14. That thing was making all kinds of noises today during the shoot around. Well, at halftime, we're going to show you a Reuben Douglas highlight package, so here we go. I'm just amazed at the open looks that he's got. I mean, that was a nice cut, made him back cut maybe once or twice in the first half. For the most part, he just hung around that perimeter and bam. Just knocking it down with confidence, the exact same stroke every time. You could draw a straight line across his toes, Bob. He's got great balance. You see what he's done throughout his career. Started off at Arizona, but 8 to 16 to 18 to 25 right now. And again, this is the year that he's making the adjustment from a set play offense to more of a motion offense, reading the defense, working himself off screens. And he's, uh, you know, fourth leading scorer in the country right now. I went down on the floor while Ruben was warming up tonight. They beat San Diego State 66 62 Saturday. I said, Ruben, what won that game for you guys? He said, defense. We played very hard. And Jimmy, I know that was something that you were a little critical of them about two weeks ago at Colorado State. Well, they gave up way too many points on the inside. You see where uh, Ruben ranks in the scoring department right now, third behind Dahmer Canton Helms. But and I talked with Rich McKay today, and he said, you know, I, I, I talked to the guys and said, if the guys from ESPN are pointing it out, you need to listen to them as much as me. And we talked about lack of defense and guys not giving up the ball, guys not playing hard for 40 minutes. And Rich McKay's goal for this program is to get to the Gonzaga level and get re recruit basketball players and that free motion offense going on you for 40 minutes. We may have a bit of a lengthy delay here. They're having all kinds of problems with the shot clock to our left. That thing's been going crazy. Right now it's blank. The technician has been to the table. He's been to the goal, checking on the wiring of it, and they still can't get it sorted out. It'll give us a chance to tell you about tomorrow night on ESPN. Super Tuesday presented by Dollar Rental Car. We're going to start you in the Big Ten. Indiana number 20 in the new poll. They take on Michigan State. And the Spartans have won nine straight in East Lansing against the Hoosiers. Then at 9 Eastern, number four, Florida and LSU. Tigers are 11 1 at home, including a win over Arizona. And Jeff Newton on the road will have to get it done for the Hoosiers tomorrow night. Well, I love teams that have three quality seniors, and certainly Indiana's one of them with Newton, Coverdale, and Hornsby. Indiana right now having some bad luck, Bob. They've had this, this will be their fifth true road game tomorrow night, and all five times they've gone on the road, the opponent they're facing is coming off of a road loss. That's bad timing in your schedule right now if you're Mike Davis. Well, they got both shot clocks working now. Ruben Douglas penetrating, creating separation. Easy. How sweet is that? 27 for Ruben Douglas tonight. Just way too easy. Allow a guy to lighten you up to catch it, bounce it twice, and shoot a 15-footer on you. You know, he averaged 31 in three games against Vegas last year. Delron Johnson stepping up for the running Rebels. You know, and despite all of this Reuben Douglas scoring we're talking about, UNLV is only down by two possessions here. Just about two minutes out of halftime. Running Rebels, as we mentioned earlier, 0-3 in conference play. First time that's happened to them in 33 years since they were in the WCC. Douglas from the corner short. Rebound, J.K. Edwards of Vegas. Here's Dalron again. He's going to go it alone. Rebound, Jermaine Lewis. He's a guard who can rebound. Demetrius Hunter for three. 16 for him. We've got a three-point game. How about Demetrius tonight? He's four out of five beyond the arc. Well, I'm telling you, and that, that, that one wheel he's got is basically flat. It's maybe 50, 60% at full speed. Tyndall for three. 
And he's had a bit of an off night. Javen Tindall with only two after scoring 17 Saturday. And the Rebels could tie this game. They'll go for the deuce instead. And J.K. Edwards rolls it in. Timeout, Richie McKay. First called timeout of the second half. It's a full timeout. So we're 2.48 out of halftime, and UNLV is right back in it. Going to have all three of their threes. Big Monday presented by Bud Light. Hey, guess what? The winner X Games are on their way. Coming up Thursday, and the Lobos know all about it. Louis the Lobo can't wait. Well, thank you, sir, for that nice promotion. My favorite thing in those games when they get on the shovel and go downhill about 50 miles an hour. You're, we're going to try that next week. Yeah, I, I heard that some guy in Johnson, Arkansas does his driveway like that. <laughs> Marcus Banks after the loose ball was found by J.K. Edwards and amazingly UNLV could take the lead here. Demetrius oh again. 19 for him and he is five out of six beyond the arc. How about that? Well that's an old fashioned shootout going on. Is there an OK corral in this building somewhere? There's a foul away for the ball. A UNLV shove by Jermaine Lewis. It'll be his third. Well, now think about it. Dem Demetrius Hunter has a bad wheel. If you look at uh, Ruben trying to work off a little double staggered screen along that baseline and just runs through the screener. If Hunter has a bad wheel, you must make him put it on the floor. Ruben, Ruben, Ruben. to the rack and before the Delron Johnson follow slam a New Mexico foul Looked like it was on David Coyote that'll be his second you know overall UNLV has more scoring options in their offense and uh, Richie McKay has to work with it New Mexico Edwards is a threat on that low block you know Dalron Johnson and Demetrius Hunter can score and Banks is just waiting to burst out and get a quick six or eight points on you Stanley Reynolds listening to Charlie Spooner. I think Charlie's team has probably erred in the fact that they, they've played the first three conference games, Bob, to the same speed as their opponent. And again, I think they're best when the game kind of borderlines on being hectic or being scrambled, mm -hmm. but more of a transition game. And he's not happy with the fact that they haven't been able to get the game going back and forth because they can't get stops consistently on the defensive end. We saw that last Monday night. When you get in the half-court brawl with Utah, you're in trouble. Yeah. J.K. Edwards, seventh point of the night. He's a 53% free throw shooter. Jermaine Lewis will sit Lamar Bigby back in for UNLV. The guy that gives them a spark at both ends coming off the bench. I tell you what, it's worth mentioning again the job that Kerry Rupp did. His first game ever as a Division I head coach, and he goes into BYU and ends the nation's longest winning streak. 44 games. Man, what a job he did. Colorado State had their 14-game home streak ended by Wyoming, their arch rival over the weekend. Oklahoma now has the nation's longest home winning streak. You look at Wyoming right now leading this league, and they're uh, eight points away from being 0-3. But the bottom line is they won the game. They've they won by two, by two, and by four without the player of the year in this league, Marcus Bailey. And that says something for that program. They've kept it going. All the way from the ball. Now Ron Johnson was chasing Walters. And we've got 4-10 out of halftime. It's the Rebels by one. It's 11:20 local time in Albuquerque, and uh, the little guy's not too happy about it. But we're glad he's watching ESPN with mom and dad here tonight. Well, it's no secret in this league that Demetrius Hunter is playing basically on a, on one leg, so you can't let him shoot jump shots on him. You've got to get up into his face, get that check your breath defense going on, and make him put it on the floor and make him do something going around you off the dribble. Right now, he's in a confidence 
groove of that uh, jump shot. You've got to make him do something else. And the Rebels have taken the lead 48-47. Amazing turnaround, just over four minutes out of halftime. Big B trying to stay with Ruben. He dumps it off. Coyote rejected by Edwards. Lobos get it back. That's Walters for Coyote to the rack. Nice job by Mark Walters, the redshirt freshman, to set that up. Good job by Coyote. He gets his first shot blocked, but they come right back to him. He just goes right back at it with two hands. The seesaw goes New Mexico's way. Demetrius Hunter way short, and three Lobos were there to box out J.K. Edwards on that long rebound. Lobos with a quick 2-3 zone that time. They recovered out to Hunter quickly on the pass. Ruben going to the baseline, fouled before the shot, and then he landed on J.K. Edwards. Well, Ruben Douglas has added this to his game a little bit this year as far as going off the bounce. You completely overplay him and deny him at the three-point line. He can go by, and again, he's got a great body on him. 6'5", and probably 215 pounds, can take a hit. You don't knock him off his path very easily. New Mexico can't get the ball in. And after calling a timeout, two minutes and two seconds ago, Richie McKay has to use another here. On top, 49-48. Super Tuesday presented by Dollar Rent-A-Car. We're seeing the Big Ten turn into a league, Jimmy. Purdue knocks off Indiana. Iowa takes care of Michigan State. Illinois had a couple of bumps in the road. Great balance right now in that league. And then, of course, the always athletic SEC. Well, I think you're looking at the SEC and the Big 12 right now, the two best conferences overall in the country. And certainly Florida's being led by freshmen right now in a couple of areas. Walsh and Roberson are really getting it done, but they wouldn't be where they are, talking about Florida at 16 and two and off to their best start in school history without the play of Matt Vaughn. He and Justin Hamilton and Brett Nelson, the three seniors that really logged a lot of minutes are why those freshmen are so good this year. Ruben Douglas with a left-hander, and that's 32 for him. Demetrius Hunter trying to stretch out that Achilles. They may need him. The way he's been shooting today. Bob, it's a 1-1-3 zone by New Mexico. Kind of flattens out to a 2-3. Two possessions in a row. They've used it. They've gotten a stop. Jermaine Lewis the miss. Ruben Douglas off to Jamal Williams. 11 for him. Hey, Ruben got an assist, Jimmy. Yep. Quit making fun of him. <laughs> steal rebels will have it with 7.1 on the shot clock and demetrius hunter is hurting big time over there bob i know you'll agree with this and uh, any time in the country people ask me where's the best place to watch a basketball game the pit is certainly one of the top two or three places oh what a great tip lamar bigby seemingly hanging up there forever after the miss by marcus banks that's a big basket for unlv I mean, there's 15,000 plus in here on the late Monday night going loud for a club that's 7-9 and nine overall. That's how they love their Lobos out here, though. Williams forcing it. I don't think that's the shot Richie McKay wanted. Ball's not going to touch the floor until it goes out of bounds. Rebels went 94 feet in a hurry. It'll be their ball. Well, look at that record. 81% at home all time. They won 41 in a row. And they're always in the top 10 nationally. And they were just out in 92. Would they have bad weather or something? Yeah. <laughs> were the roads torn up? Well, it's a great facility. You walk in at ground level, and from there, it's straight downhill. You know, row one is at the top. You come down, the row numbers go up. So don't ever buy a row one seat at the pit, folks. <laughs> You'll be upstairs. Yeah. James Peters' first basket of the night. Good ball game. New Mexico, 53, UNLV, 52. Seven minutes out of halftime. Now 
Michael McCowan in there for New Mexico. Guy who gets about seven or eight minutes a game. Mark Walters with a half dozen tonight. He's been a good spot player for them. Underneath. That was too easy. And it's two in a row for Peters. You know, Marcus Banks is not involved in this ball game offensively scoring. But now he's got to continue to play hard defensively. He's got to get involved in the game offensively. And you just kind of watch him right now. Here's the men on the court. He's well, not a happy guy out there. You know what he does have? Eight assists in the game. That'll be foul number three on Lamar Bigby of UNLV. Demetrius Hunter playing courageously as back. I mean, one week ago tonight, they told us he was going to miss three games. Then he comes out Saturday at Air Force and plays 26 minutes, chasing cadets all over the floor. Now, last time I mean, that's a hard him. team to play defense against. Yeah, he had his foot in, a, in, a, in a, one of those boots the last time we saw him. Tindall running the point for New Mexico. Jamal Williams turning to face. Now Ben Johnson. Yeah, he might have gotten ball, but a lot of time the officials will call you just for reaching around like that. That's his second. Good job tonight by Stanley Reynolds, Rick Hartzell, and Larry Spaulding in the Mountain West officiating crew. There's Ruben. Belly up defense there by Ernest Turner. That's what you have to force him to do. And Jamal Williams can't knock it down. And how about James Peters all of a sudden for the run and Rebels? Here's Demetrius Hunter. A little pull up. And that is a foul on Michael McCowan of New Mexico. We see what Vegas has started to do in transition. They get that ball off the miss and they push it up quickly. Now Hunter is not a, a ball of speed right now because of that. Uh, that bad ankle, he seemed lifting at the end of the play. And now it's New Mexico that has to make a new commitment to the defensive end. Demetrius Hunter is a Las Vegas kid out of Cheyenne High School where he was an All-American. A top 15 player in the West, and he went east to play at Georgetown. Can't hit the one-on-one. -on -one. Out of bounds, it goes off James Peters. The under 12-minute timeout. UNLV by one, a barn burner at the pit tonight. By Bud Light. We've got a story to tell you tonight about a very courageous man who may not play basketball anymore, Jimmy, but he's in our thoughts. Well, one of two seniors on this year's squad, boom, since you carry right there, just took a normal looking charge, but Bob, he lay motionless on the pit floor for about 15 minutes, and for the next two weeks, uh, paralysis all over his entire body, and then on December 8, 2002, you see him there with his now fiance, Nadia Steed walking for the first time and think you had surgery today and thank you buddy we're thinking of you our prayers are certainly with you and today a two-hour procedure to remove a bulging disc in his upper spine and fuse the spine at that level to prevent further injury i still have a panel on my little chart here in his tribute he scored a total of seven points in an early game against cal and then he got hurt and he faces a year and a half of rehab, and we will not forget Sin Q. Carey, a young man from East Palo Alto, California, who played at Washington for two years before transferring here to New Mexico. When you talk about a tough break for Richie McKay, he inherited a squad that was down on talent anyways, and there's one of his only two seniors that he lost. 34 for Ruben Douglas on a great assist by Javen Tindall. And at the other end, rejection time. Good job by Tyndall and Douglas. Just the communication, the overplay Douglas, clear out the other side of the floor. A set play by Richie McKay out of the timeout. Gets Ruben Douglas an easy two. Nice hand for Michael McCowan who leaves as the Lobos got tough in the air defensively at the other end. Now Ron Johnson, Demetrius Hunter, Ernest Turner. Rebound, Ruben Douglas. Ruben's averaging seven boards a game in conference play. And a lot more points, but he misfires that through. James Peters barely kept that ball in. Whoops, Tindall gets it. He's got two trailers. He'll do it himself. 
short. Oh, bad and, decision. I mean, all he had to do was draw the defender, and he had two guys. Have to have awareness of personnel and what's going on around you. Look at Tim Lee knows that he's being chased by a bigger defender. Just boom, the trailer's right there for an easy layup, and he lays it up short. Oh, tight ball games. You can't blow the easy ones. David Coyote back in for New Mexico. Mark Walters, who just got his third foul, leaves, and the Rebels will bring it down the floor with a chance to take the lead. We're 50 seconds away from the midway point, second half. At the half, New Mexico led by nine, 41-32, and the Rebels erased it in a hurry. Here's Delron Johnson, nicely done. 13 for the senior out of Verbum Day in L.A., where he played for David Greenwood. Well, good, great job by Delron Johnson to flash in from the weak side on that baseline, stepped right in front of that backline defender. Simply turn and score from that point. Jamal Williams keeping his dribble, losing it on the way up. What I tell you about him when he puts it on the floor, he is not going to pass that ball. Dalron the trailer. Dalron missing the three. Great rebound, J.K. Edwards. Rebels looking confident offensively all of a sudden. Entry pass. Banks to Johnson. Knocked away by the Lobos. And they will keep it, will the Rebels. Bob Dallin Johnson's operating well along that baseline. See him stepping right there in front of the defender on the low block. And then from there, six feet and in, he's just pretty much up and over the top of him. You got to step and meet him at the point of contact and body him up on that low block. Well, you're, you're talking a lot of defense to them. Who's going to execute defensively? That may be who wins this game. Here's Edwards. J.K. with a strong step through. He got away from Coyote. And that's double figures for the junior out of Clemens, North Carolina. Rebels back on top, this time by three. You know, he didn't have that post presence last year in their offense. If Edwards just gets that, you know, 10 points, eight boards a game type stuff consistently, then it really helps that perimeter game. Yeah, they really haven't had it since the great Casper Scambala wrapped up his no. career two years ago. We enjoyed watching him develop into a big time college player. Yao Ming might have been able to reach that alley oop, but he's not in Albuquerque today. And we've got a timeout. NBA Fast Break Tuesday. They're going to announce the reserves for the All Star team tomorrow. Obviously, some will get snubbed. The guys will talk about it. Live post game from Celtics Pistons and a live look in at five games plus the Jazz and the Kings. And you can log on to ESPN.com for more on the NBA. Chris Weber for the Kings starting to play like a possible league MVP candidate. He's really putting it on people. Richie McKay using his fourth timeout of the night right here with 9.18 to go. Well, it's a, a pivotal game for New Mexico because they're on their home floor. Again, the goal in this league, as in most leagues, win all your home games and then try to go on the road and win three or four on the road in the Mountain West will pretty much secure you at least a tie of the Mountain West Championship. It has in the history so far of this thing. Rebels sizzling second half. And New Mexico, right about where they were first half, 48% or so. Oh, Jermaine Lewis getting right up on Ruben Douglas out there on the perimeter. Off the hands of Dalron Johnson, a fresh 35 for the Lobos with 8.56 to go. You know, it's been a crazy year in the Mountain West so far. Coming into tonight, there have been 13 conference games. 10 have been decided by 10 points or less. So the league is at great balance in some of their results so far. And tonight, no exception. A three-point spread with nine minutes to go. You know what won it for Wyoming last year? They, they won all the close ones, and they're starting off on that same path this year. Ruben Douglas, tough shot. Crazy rebound, though. Frustrating for J.K. Edwards. That thing just kept hanging up in the air, and he mistimed his jump, and he'll get a foul as he was going after Jamal Williams. Jamal Williams really productive on the inside the last couple of weeks. For a guy 6'6", and he understands how to box off on the offensive glass, 
A lot of times kids just do it defensively, and Jamal Williams is starting to learn that it's okay to do it on the offensive end as well. Shot goes, box your guy off that's covering you, and then that helps your chances out. At the line, Jamal Williams. Good-looking sophomore out of Centennial High School in Corona, California. Where he was a co-California, Southern California player of the year. They like his inside-outside game. As Jimmy mentioned recently, all they wanted from him is to play a little bit harder. The results are coming. He had 13 against San Diego State. He's got 13 tonight. Marcus Banks has scored one basket tonight, but he has nine assists. That was a lazy pass. Here comes Jamal Williams, and uh, Marcus fouls him to take it away. Marcus with his third foul of the night. And that whole possession looked like it was in slow motion there. Well, that's what I was talking about Marcus Banks earlier, Bobby, just not really into the game. And they've taken away his scoring ability, so he's kind of a little lackadaisical out there defensively and certainly on that lazy pass right there. You know, Just you've got to separate. Pass. You've got to separate your defense from your offense when you're not scoring. As well, especially when you're the leader of your club on the floor. I mean, he should trigger them defensively and he should still trigger them offensively. But you just don't see that aggressive attack, back up and then re-attack out of Marcus Banks tonight, which he is so, so good at. And this will be 14 for Jamal Williams. After he goes one for two, 60 60 with 8.20 remaining. Hunter got away from Tyndall. All of a sudden, the shots aren't falling at either end. And remember in the Utah game, Marcus Banks got to the rim anytime he wanted. And he's not even attempting to get there right now. Dalron Johnson's had a good second half. Right to the rack he goes. Dalron with 10 of his 15 in 12 minutes of the second half. I mean, Marcus Banks was unstoppable last Monday night. We haven't seen him take anybody on one-on-one -on -one here. Jamal Williams will. That's a good reaching rebound for UNLV's James Peters. Jermaine Lewis hasn't hit a three ball tonight. He's 0 for 4 out there. Here's Ruben Douglas. Uh-oh. That's a blocking foul. He was airborne into Dalron Johnson. And for Dalron, that'll be his third. Well, uh, again, it's the ability of Ruben Douglas in transition to catch the ball. I mean, from there, then he has options. He can jump up and stroke it on you, or he can blow by and go to the rim. I think as soon as you lose possession, if you're assigned to guard Ruben Douglas, you almost run over and grab his jersey and run down the floor with him like that. You I can, think that's how you guard him. You can let go of my shirt now. <laughs> <laughs> he's so uh, he's, he's so good. I, I've enjoyed watching him develop already this year. Just reading the screens. He's much more comfortable giving the ball up and trusting his teammates to get it back to him at the end of the possession. He's a handful. 35 for Ruben Douglas. He's almost got three dozen. Now, Dalron Johnson's been great in the second half for UNLV. And it's 62. ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball. Brought to you by the BMW 5 Series. BMW, the ultimate driving machine. What do they think this is, Vegas? It's Albuquerque, New Mexico, 62-61. And Jimmy and I in Vegas back on March 7th. We sat at the table and watched one of the wildest games ever as UNLV beat New Mexico, 120-117, double OT. Who could stop who in that one? <laughs> Again, you got to remember in this league now, UNLV is set up for one more year to have the conference tournament on their home floor. A huge plus. Ruben, of course, over 30 that night on 12 of 25 shooting and a losing effort. The Lobos then went to the NIT and lost to Minnesota. The Running Rebels went on to beat Utah in the next game by six, lost to San Diego State by three in the championship game, which put the Aztecs into the NCAA tournament. Vegas went to the NIT, beat Arizona State before losing at South Carolina. That was, of course, 
Now Charlie Spoonauer at the helm for his first year. Fran Fraschilla was coaching the Lobos a year ago at this time. Omari Pearson couldn't finish. That's on the baseline. And the Lobos will get it. Great hustle on both sides there. Omari Pearson getting the floor burn. Could not keep that ball in. Bob, I, I love Marcus Banks. I mean, he's got a great body. He's got great speed. He can blow by people, and he has not been to the free throw stripe yet tonight. Now, that's another sign of him offensively just in a little bit of a funk. Well, I think it's more than a little. I'm starting to think there may be something wrong physically for him to not be taken on. Ryan Ashcraft one-on-one -on -one tonight. Here's Ruben Douglas going one-on-one -on -one against Demetrius Hunter. Pretty good stop. And look at McCowan get the ball away from three guys. Shot clock, shot clock, shot clock. It goes to zero. And no iron from Javen Tindall. Richie McKay, first year here. 37 years of age. And the Lobo fans hoping a guy that will be here for a long time like Dave Bliss was. Dave doing a good job at Baylor right now. He's got three of the better sophomores in the Big 12. Well, he was getting those Lobos in the NCAA tournament on a pretty regular basis when he was here. There's an out ball from Dalron Johnson. Patrick Dennehy is redshirting at Baylor right now. R.T. Gwynn, a former Lobo, is shooting threes for Baylor in the Big 12. It looks like a little variation of the Air Force offense right now. A little high post screening action going on with the cutters. The denial by Jermaine Lewis on Ruben Douglas there. When they get out of their motion, they'll go to that set offensive from time to time. Ruben looked up at the shot clock. It was at 11. It's now at 6. Ashcraft driving. Ruben, deep three. What a rebound for Walters. That's a guy 6'2 who was elevating seriously there. Rock running under the 520 mark. Vegas having to play a lot of defense here. Tyndall for three. And the lid won't come off for the Lobos. Rebels by one, running down to the five minute mark. Hunter for three. And all of a sudden, Demetrius is short with his shots. i tell you what, Mark Walters does a great job of playing the back line of that zone, Bob, at 6-2. The shot went, and the first thing he did was started backing up into Dalron Johnson and gets the rebound because of it. The Lobos are having another second-half swoon. The other day, they had seven points in the last nine minutes. Tonight, they haven't had a field goal in the last seven minutes. Walters for McCowan. Shot clock at eight. Lots of traffic over there. Ruben Douglas. Oh, to the rack. Wow. That's a field goal. Rebels call a timeout. He's more than a jump shooter. With his shot clock winding down, he goes past four defenders and punches it at the end. I mean, look at this. Just turns the corner. No one rotates into the picture. Wham! On top of the entire team. That's what you recruit right there. You don't teach it. You recruit it. Hard to guard is Reuben Douglas. Reuben Douglas at 35 at Colorado State, 34 at Wyoming, an off day, if you will, against San Diego State when he gets 21, a career high today. The last low to score like this was Kenny Page back in 70, or in 81, when he scored 70 points in two games against Air Force and Hawaii. Reuben Douglas is the New Mexico offense. You know what, the last Lobo to score 42 points was Greg Brown. Back in 94, and Ruben's got a shot at it. Greg Brown is in the building tonight. They honored their 94 WAC champions. Mexico staying in that 2-3 zone, Bob. 
Shot clock at eight. Demetrius Hunter knocking down the three, his first one in a while, and Demetrius has 22 tonight. If you play a 2-3 zone against Demetrius Hunter's squad right now, you have to shade his side. You cheat his way about another step or step and a half, and you're there when he, on the catch. Demetrius Hunter getting all tied up with Ruben Douglas and Demetrius. That'll be his fourth of the night. Kid's playing with a lot of heart, though, right there, folks. I'm telling you, every step he takes, he's in pain. Yeah, and that left Achilles tendon. Charlie Spoonauer couldn't say enough great things about that Vegas kid and getting him back into the program. Ruben looked like a guy who just left a putt short. He was walking to the iron as the ball got there. Sometimes in the late part of ball games, his free throw shooting has not been that great. Well, he missed a key one up at Wyoming that would have probably won the game for him. Would have put him up four with you know, 12, 13 seconds to go. And they lost an OT to the Cowboys, 85-81. 3.20 to go. UNLV by two. And the Rebels desperate for that first conference win. They're 0-3 in the Mountain West. Now Ron Johnson against Jamal Williams. Good help from Keote. Hunter for three. Keote taking hit, staying with it. And it's out of bounds off of his hands. Rebels with the ball when we come back. Folks, you better rotate. Here comes Ruben. Demetrius Hunter, 22 points tonight. Rebels by two with three minutes to go. I watched what happened this last time when uh, Douglas dunks on everybody's head right here. Demetrius Hunter's the help defender that's going to come into play. Hold it, guys, right there. This is Demetrius Hunter. Now, his job is to step this way big and seal that play off and not let Douglas turn the corner. But I think because he can't push off quickly with that left foot, he just doesn't get there in time and allows Douglas to get all the way to the rim and finish. You just cannot let a guy like Douglas turn the corner and attack on you. Uh, Demetrius and Ruben getting it done at both ends tonight. These guys have been great. And it's really hard for, Doug, for Hunter to push off on that left foot. You just watch him working in the half-court offense right now. He's one and a half footed out there. That's not good in any sport. Shot clock at 15. Marcus Banks with the ball. Now run Johnson with a high pick and roll. Nothing developing there. Shot clock at seven. Banks for three. How Big shot that? for him. Marcus Banks, six out of 16 in conference play beyond the arc with that make. Rebels by five. That's a huge lead in this game. I'm telling you, I don't think we'll ever see another game where Marcus Banks at least one time doesn't attack the rim off the dribble. Ruben, uh, the three just rimmed out on him. It touched the iron a couple of times. And UNLV, with two minutes left, has a five-point lead in quest of its first conference win. And a tough place to get one. And a foul by Ashcraft on Marcus Banks, who's a 73% free throw shooter. Where these second half swoons are troublesome for the Lobos. By the way, only 14 fouls on New Mexico. Is this right? Zero team foul. UNLV has none. No, that's not right. They've got some. The scoreboard's wrong. There's our second half shooting. And it shows the Lobos missing 12 of their last 14 shots. Ouch. Reuben Douglas will not be out of this game very long. And a reach around by David Coyote, his third. I think that zero on the board means 10 for the UNLV team fouls. Running Rebels as a club are really shooting free throws well. 79% in conference play. That's only five team fouls. So another one to give. And there's a little hand check off the inbounds pass, evidently on Jeff Hart. You know what, everybody hollering at Richie McKay, what are you doing taking Ruben Douglas out of the game? Well, he puts number 22 in and lets him foul twice. And now you got the bonus thing going. These coaches know what they're doing. Yeah, he didn't get this job by coaching sixth graders last yeah. year. 
Well, there's a saying, if you listen to everybody in the arena, pretty soon you'll be up there sitting with them. <laughs> That's what got us up here. <laughs> yeah, 10 fouls. Shot clock, refired to 35 there, so UNLV in a good situation. And trying to shoot around to make that steal, Jamal Williams will get his third. Rich McKay gets what he wants. I mean, he doesn't waste a lot of time, and now he's got UNLV on the free throw strike. And Reuben Douglas didn't have to give up a foul to help put him there. Kevin Frazier and Brian Kenny next with Sports Center at the Super Bowl. Some Monday madness here on Big Monday. How about Steve Mariucci? Is he heading back to his native Michigan? And they'll talk about tonight in the NBA. Big free throw for J.K. Edwards. That's 11 for him. And this one is huge. This could make it a three possession game. Well, we've got another dandy next Monday, don't we? Wyoming at San Diego State. Uh huh. That was one of those thrillers last year that we kept having back to back to back. Yeah, we were working a lot of overtime and happy to do it. New Mexico needs some quick hits here. 90 seconds to go. Ruben Douglas swishing the three. That's 40. Four point game. Oh, taken away! Brian Ashcraft ahead to Jamal Williams. I mean, not a real good pass on the break right there. You are kind. Partner. All right, all right, a terrible pass. Oh man, you have a chance to get back to within two with a make over a minute to go. Hart checks back in, probably to foul somebody as Reuben Douglas takes a momentary seat. What I tell you about Marcus Banks, though, when he decides to go to the rim, he's going to get there. There's Hart following Banks. <laughs> Jeff Hart's job there, get a foul, but please don't let the official call an intentional one on you. He's been able to get a couple. So we've got a minute five to go. UNLV by four, and Marcus Banks at the line. Well, nothing like shaking the hand of the official before you hit your free throws. We'll see if Marcus can do that. You got a white jersey on. You box off. You take people's legs out from under him right now and don't give him a chance to jump. Marcus Banks only six points tonight. Double figure assists with ten. And no matter what happens here, it's a two possession game. Big rebound, J.K. Edwards, as the ball hit off the back iron, it came flying out, and Reuben Douglas will get a foul. Well, that's what I just talked about. It doesn't matter if it, it hits the back iron, the backboard, the shot clock, it doesn't matter. You have got to pinch and step in and don't, don't even allow a guy to get his feet up off the ground if you're wearing a white jersey right now. The game is on the line. Dalron Johnson could make it a three-possession affair. Dal run at the line, 16 of 17 in conference play coming into this game. And his first one of the night goes in. Now Rich McKay's inherited a squad that I, you know, he's, he's trying to teach him how to win. It, it was a, right around a 500 year for him last year, and it's just small things, just like that. That just cost them two points, not boxing off on that free throw play right there. Timeout, running Rebels, and they're in a great spot now, up seven with a minute to go. Another reminder of Super Tuesday tomorrow night. It's presented by Dollar Rent-A-Car. Michigan State has dominated the Hoosiers in East Lansing, but the Spartans have been struggling over the last month or so. And then a 9 Eastern Florida goes to a very difficult place to win in Baton Rouge, where those Bayou Bengals have won 11 of 12 this year. Well, they stung Arizona this year, so that's all you need to know. And they're led right now by a guy named Ronald Dupree, who's second in the SEC in rebounding at nine a game. So as good as that Florida club is right now, they Billy Donovan better have packed his A game for tomorrow night. 
UNLV has never been 0-4 in any conference they've been in. The West Coast, the Big West, the WAC, or the Mountain West. They've embarked on an 11-3 run in the last three and a half minutes to forge this seven-point advantage. New Mexico needs some quick hits now, but they've got time to do it. Tyndall lost it into the hands of Dalron Johnson all the way down to Marcus Banks. He tried to leave it for Hunter, and Ryan Ashcraft deflected that ball over the baseline. Turnovers tonight. That was number eight for New Mexico, so not that many. So this one off the air. Sports Center comes your way. And a foul by Jamal Williams at midcourt. The pit has become very quiet. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure Charlie Spoonhour is awfully pleased if he gets out of here with a win, but he will do a lot of teaching. Just like that last deal right there. You're up 66 to 73. The game's in hand. You're going to try to throw a bounce pass between your legs in transition. I mean, you just, that's, you just, that's the kind of stuff that'll make a head coach end up going out and sitting on a park bench and talking to the pigeons. Plays like that. <laughs> Well, Charlie's probably done that a few times. <laughs> hey, if, if I'm a pigeon, I'm listening, too, because you'll be entertained. 46 seconds to go. Rebels by nine. Ruben Douglas forcing the three. And UNLV. That ball was probably tipped. Yeah, New Mexico will have it. That's the proper call. Helping out from the wing out there was Rick Hartzell on that call, a good veteran official. Well, UNLV has shown some toughness tonight to come in here. They're down at the half. Stanley Reynolds is over at the table. They had put a fresh 35 in the shot clock. They had to reset it to 28. These guys don't miss anything in the stripes, do they? This is Hart. Ashcraft. Way off with the three. Kept alive under there momentarily by Walters and UNLV is going to escape the pit with their first conference win. Shot clock is off, and they will avoid what would have been their first 0-4 start in conference play in the history of their outstanding program. No, Bob, they head home also. I think they've got like six out of their next eight at home in the Thomas and Mac. So now this one's big. They can trade this one for the loss at home to Utah last Monday and still be right in the thick of things. New Mexico had designs on a 500 record. Ruben Douglas scores 40 points tonight on 15 of 31 shooting, but it's not enough. The rest of his team only scores 26. Stay tuned. Sports Center at the Super Bowl is next. For Jimmy Dykes and our entire ESPN crew, I'm Bob Carpenter. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Log on to ESPN.com. Good night, folks, from the Mountain West and the Pit.